Today, dear friends, we are the first generation to stand on the top of a mountain of evidence of exponential rise of pressures. We're the first generation with absolutely no excuse to act. But in 1962, you could almost excuse those who said, look here, we don't really believe that it has to go this wrong because Rachel Carson was just at the beginning of the curve. We are not in the beginning of the curve, we're at the end of the curve. We've hit the ceiling. So dear friends, welcome to the Anthropocene. Now the good news is that this is starting to be understood. Around the world, you see ample, ample media, policy, business recognizing that we are in this new geological epoch. It started actually with The Economist, as you see the front page here, welcoming humanity to the Anthropocene. The Economist, as you may know, is this beautiful, eloquent, strict British weekly, so influential in the economic business world. I'm a great admirer of The Economist. It has these kind of British understatement type language, which I find so convincing sometimes. And there's a quote in here which reflected so well and still reflects how we scientists feel today. And it says as follows, when things are changing faster than science stipulates it should, a certain degree of nervousness is a reasonable response. <laughs> and British understatement. And, and you know, that, that's exactly what we're seeing. Things are changing faster than science stipulates it should. Not a certain, but a significant degree of nervousness is a reasonable response. So dear friends, welcome to the Anthropocene.